I want to get to these New Zealand bros. Um, yeah. So. Let's do the ringer. We're not gonna. We're not. I'm not gonna play the full clip again. Of either of these guys, uh, of either of these raps. Um, but this is an interesting, like, it's an interesting example of it doesn't matter what the sort of culture a, a billionaire uh, puts on his flag. They fucking suck, and mm-hmm. they and but they also run things and can do whatever the hell they want, and they get indulged uh, by any government in the world. Basically, all you gotta do is look at Elon Musk's what is it, the yoke steering wheel, to see oh. a great example of that. Right, exactly. So, the let's just go back to the start. Uh, this clip here, Silicon Valley guy rapping. Ready to go? Cause I'm. Um, I need to get the very beginning of that. Here is, um, he'll introduce himself. Yo, yo, I hope y'all ready to go, cause I'm ready to flow. And blow like a volcano, y'all ain't even ready to know. Got so much excitement and so many good feelings as we're here today to celebrate and create of HQ of New Zealand. When you come from overseas, the first thing you see is just trees and honeybees, clean mountain springs and endless fields of green. Okay, now... There's like the weird laughter of like kind of indulgent laughter. It's like, ha ah, good. This is kind of funny school project or little like uh, experiment you're doing. This is not a one-off thing for him. In fact, he'll repeat some of the uh, words that he said there. Like, uh, are you ready to go? I'm ready to flow or whatever the hell that was. So let's just go to that one uh, right now. And then we'll get to some of the quotes of like what exactly these Americans are doing in. Yeah, I need to know. In, uh, in, uh. Yeah, but here's uh, here's another one. This is him a little bit later. This is the second album. Is this him? Yeah, this is him. Man, he got glow up. Yeah, I know. This is what happens when you. Uh, yeah. So just to set the table a little bit, these are like a couple of guys that made a whole bunch of money selling some sort of software to uh, better search through government records, like ten or so years ago, and they sold it to like Ancestry.com or one of those websites for 140 milli, and now, <laughs> and now they're they bought like a giant parcel of land. Uh, north of Wellington, New Zealand, uh, just to set the table a little bit more. And what you're seeing on the screen now is what happens after a year or two of that. And when you think you are sort of a pioneer in flowetry, uh, flowetry being uh, what uh, uh, BMO, uh, b- this guy, uh, calls his uh, this little performance here. I hope y'all ready to go because I'm ready to flow <laughs> and blow like a volcano. Y'all ain't even ready to know. Got so much excitement and so many good feelings as we're here today at New Frontiers, New Zealand. With all these bright minds coming together, merging in a conscious co-creation, elevation way beyond the ordinary into the realms of the imagination. Got artists, engineers, entrepreneurs, investors, activists all at the top of the game saying we're the ones we've been waiting for to create and inspire the change. Now let's just do a close reading of that. A little uh, self-anointment of being change (laughs) agents. We're the one that we've been waiting for. That's convenient. Uh, uh, So, oh, whoops, I I lost my, okay. So just to go back up a little bit here. BMO. Um, <laughs> BMO. Um, there's this great piece here uh, linked to called The Americans um, in stuff.co.new uh, Zealand. Um, they're young, rich Silicon Valley idealists who want to change the world from New Zealand. I mean, as a lot of people are, this article points out that uh, it's becoming a right wing prepper thing. There's an article in The New Yorker recently about a whole bunch of right wingers doing this. These guys say they're nothing mm-hmm. at all like that. Um, but basically, every February since 2014, they've been um, descended onto White Man's Valley. Now, that name is interesting because there's this interesting dynamic where these, these tech guys, here's what I think they're going to do, is they're going to take that White Man's Valley name be, and sort of take over the valley using that name mm-hmm. as reason, as warrant, because you people should have called this white man's name. Now, I don't know the whole story of white man, the guy whose name this is mm-hmm. uh, named after. It's apparently important to the uh, 
local community there and they're pissed off whenever these people use a different uh, new branding term they're trying to launch. Um, I don't have a super big stake in place names. This isn't my place, but I, in this fight against the billionaires, I'm going to support the people, uh, not wanting yeah, to rename I mean, it some sort of marketing screen. To be reckoned with, it'd be better if the people are reckoning Ex- with it precisely than just some person rebranding as place. Yes. That's the point is you don't get to say we're the ones we've been waiting for to change this fucking nickname. This yeah. has to be a communal effort of the people that are there and affected by it. <laughs> right. Um, so what's amazing is, They've gotten involved with, like, the local community there. This is a very, like, Elon Musk-type situation where it's like, oh, how can you bring innovation to New Zealand? Let's, like, let's give a $4 million contract to these hippies. Uh, or, like, whatever, like, th- what is it? This is, mm-hmm. They're kind of 21st century cyber hippies. Now, I think just the broad understanding of that sort of hippie culture is that it uh, defanged itself politically. <laughs> Um, uh, and di- coincided with uh, weakening of the left broadly. So um, I think maybe the, uh, the designation's apt here. Um, but there's this amazing bit here where what's extraordinary is the extent to which they have the ear of government officials convincing them that they know best how to attract fellow innovators from around the world and winning a $4 million contract to do just that. Their startup, Kiwi Connect, a networking platform for entrepreneurs, is a driving force behind the Edmund Hillary Fellowship, a program that will select candidates for new global impact visas. Uh, they've partnered with the Hillary Institute for International Leadership to create fellowships. So we have the unprecedented situation of rich Americans helping immigration in New Zealand decide who will become Kiwis. Insane. Absolutely insane. And I, would, I will say this. They would not be allowed to do that if they were explicit with beliefs about like the sort of right wing doomsday prepper billionaires mm-hmm. that are moving to Kiwi, uh, moving to New Zealand um, th- themselves, right? So I am raising an eyebrow at all this PR they d- they're doing about regenerating the soil and giving a fuck about the rivers and all this stuff. I think it is to protect contracts with the government, right? I mean, oh, yeah. uh, unbelievable. Like, I mean, you, you wonder why people react negatively against some of this stuff. Like that, these guys are, and they're they're couching in all this in eco friendly. Um, we want to be close to nature, but also close to a city environment, and all blah 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 blah. And tying all this stuff, frankly, like, um, uh, particularly with addressing climate change, needs to get done to um to market themselves for government contracts. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I, I I just wanted to add that like it's kind of. Um, I don't know. It's the other side of the coin of the this kind of proliferation of the Silicon Valley ideology into other corners of I was going to say the country, but now like the world, right? So it's like you know, New Zealand is like a you know. I think sometimes people get a little romantic about the politics of of New Zealand. I'll just say that, right? right. Obviously, they have some they have social welf- welfare programs and things like that 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 we support. But you know, when it comes to big things like class struggle, we're all sort of in the same boat, unfortunately, right? But um, New Zealand has like the advantage of being a smaller country that, you know, if you are a kind of sinister person who wants to go and get a lot of people with a lot of money in, and influence to move somewhere, as we are already seeing, you know, in the, those stories, people suggesting immigration policy um, to, to, to the country, right? Like that's a way to try to co-op government. And like basically what you're seeing from uh, a lot of the Silicon Valley people is this move to, uh, you know, is to try to be able to have more, not just economic power, but actually start seeing that translate into state power. Right. So you go to a place where you think that like, you might have a little bit more sway because, you know, there's not as many super, super wealthy folks, though. There are a lot of people, um, who do own property in New Zealand, um, who are super wealthy by the way, um, Mm. or what they're trying to do here in Texas, which is like, come out of Texas and nobody will tell you what to do because there's like no loss here. Right. right. Which they're also finding doesn't really work either. That's why they're starting to get into the traditional American practice of bribing politicians. But um, I don't know. It's, it's just like, it's, I don't know. It's like, you know, one version of, of the, that Exodius is like, oh, let's go to like the small place where we can like, yeah, and they share our kind of values and we don't have to deal with that. Um, you know, the kind of conservatism um, of other places. But the idea is basically to subvert the government, you know, a government or any kind of regulatory agency to be able to do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Right. I just got to share this this other thing. Oh man, 
um this isn't this isn't uh, audible but uh brother brian now i don't know if that i think they're just saying this is his brother um but it sounds like a this all seems very culty too a little bit to me but brother brian 30 who was in the u.s during this interview is into something called flowetry a cross between rap and poetry and will often take the mic at conferences introducing himself as bemo sample lyric let me speak it quite clearly so y'all can hear me you ain't got to live in New Zealand to live Kiwi. So rough, man. I wonder how the, the Mari feel about that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, who's included in this kind of fantasy that they're building there? We are the ones we've been waiting for. Yeah. And you are going to go get us more bottled water, please. This should, <laughs> this should I mean, it's it's a cancer on on two levels. It's like it's certainly a count cancer of like money and power, but this culture, it's just got to fucking die. This stuff is just so sick. And yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm not even talking morally right now. It's like these are just people I don't want to be around. Like even in a social setting, like this yes. sucks, man. To be it's bloated baby shit to sit around and say. I'm going to have enough like power and, and influence and money that I can just like act like, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like the kid who comes down at like, um, you know, the kid who like interrupts the grown ups party to like fucking do a performance in the middle of it. Right. Cause their parents won't tell them, no, nobody wants to fucking see your puppet show. Yes. Right. Like that's literally it, but it's like the grown up version. Of well, it. yeah, exactly. Like money allows that bullshit to defy gravity. So you can keep growing into it and never, I mean, just, <laughs> I, I... this is uh geodesic dome. Uh, which was pioneered by Buckminster Fuller. He's been a, a lifelong hero and a hometown hero where we grew up in Southern Illinois. Uh, it was actually where he was a professor. Uh, and so this is a, a greenhouse and it's designed to create an environment where we can experiment with growing food. Whiteman's Valley is an upper hut, which usually gets a bad rap. So when people in New Zealand find out that we moved from California to upper hut, they often have a puzzled look on their face. Um, but. I don't know if it's about Upper Hut. I think it's like, why the fuck are you here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, they're so perplexed by Upper Hut. No, they're wondering why, yeah, why you came here to like build domes of plants and yeah. So when people in New Zealand find out that we moved from California to Upper Hut, they often have a puzzled look on their face, um, but we love it here. We think it's uh, the right <laughs> Despite the perplexity of the locals. To the city. What we're doing here in the dome, as well as throughout the valley, is essentially first and foremost just learning. Um, but what we hope to do is be able to um, build upon New Zealand's farming expertise and think about how can we uh, produce healthy food, uh, repair soil, repair waterways, really thinking about regenerative agriculture. So I don't, I don't actually consider myself too much of a techno-utopian uh, or believer that technology is going to solve all of our problems. You know, I like the Bill McKibben quote that says... Okay, yeah, that's enough of that. And I, there's, there's another uh, damn bad, rough one for Bill McKibben there. Um, um, let's see. I want to find out... Um, there, there, there's locals commenting on their oh yeah they're very ruthless um, one man who has got to know the Americans says they're not so different to other business people they're oh, very really, ruthless oh, really Matt are you, are you serious but I saw him he had a puffy jacket on he, he said regenerative farming practices you can't say those words unless you're like graced by God um, they're very ruthless they're really driven by performance they're really astute businessmen who put this big cheery Che uh, cheesy grin and smiley face to it all. The biggest bone of contention is the American's habit of calling the community oh well that's one bone of contention Aroha Valley on the websites an apparent belief that white man's valley has racist overtones. Now I'm not sure if that, I'd be curious if that's the only bone of contention um, it's not the main bone of contention I'd be a little yeah. bit curious about some of the like that that's not a businessman like okay, what, is it, what does he mean by his business but I, I, I do agree with yeah I mean, again, like, um, yeah, not weighing too much in, in the particular history there, but dude, it, it's, it's rich to come from the United States of America 
the racial utopia of the United States of America to another uh, col- colonized society, yeah. another society that has has done wicked things, um, and to talk to people about you know writing history and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> name things is just next level. Yeah, implanting your Buckminster Fuller uh, fascination into New Zealand as everyone's looking at you like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, I it is amazing and i mm. honestly think that dynamic is really um classic for the time period we're into and i'd be curious how much they use that as warrant to basically get what they want um over oh for sure i mean they know they know what place yeah. right and this is just why i mean you've seen this right matt i'm just saying like this kind of thing like we're, we're unfortunately we're gonna have to be paying a lot more attention uh, to it because there is such a desire um to break out of you know I don't know. They talk a lot about community, but this kind of like techno Silicon Valley, like ideology is all about breaking, like, I don't know, like community power, democratic power so that you could create your own little fiefdom and and, and be in charge. And you've seen this, right, Matt? Oh, yes, I did see that. Um, we should find somebody to talk about more depth with this, but this is, you know, one of the big threats that they're putting out plans for a $400 billion new city in the American desert unveil unveiled. That, um, well, yeah. I mean, that's, what's so infuriating about when they say we, we appreciate this because we're close to the city and close to the, uh, uh, nature, which is like, you want to exploit both. Right, yeah. like, you, like you basically need to take from both, so you're going to be close to both. Like, let's stop mm-hmm. fucking um, being poetic about it. You want to take shit from, you need shit from the people in a city, and you want to be far enough away from them to make your little domes. It's wild. I mean, th- the only benefit would be if they did this, as long as they do it, don't do it in the great state of Texas, um, is that maybe you can get all the weirdos and, and put them far, far away from the rest of us. I mean, I'm just super skeptical, honestly. Like, Oh, it's, it's full of shit. It's not going to happen. Right. It's just like, what is it, Mohammed bin Salman? He's got his... Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the his, like line. His, his line city, too. I mean, it's just uh, examples of, of hubris that are, uh, you know, just going to sink a hell of a lot of money. It's like, you know, it's a thing where it's like, back in 1920 or whatever, it'd be like, somebody said they could make a really big dam like mm-hmm. the hoover dam it's like i'll believe it when i see it like yeah. that especially when it comes to things that are going to be done by private uh titans of industry good luck with that let's see that pan out exactly i no thank you sir <laughs>